The Medici are buried here, in the family chapel in the church of San Lorenzo in Florence. They hired Michelangelo to create these statues just for their tombs. And I think it's one of the most beautiful tombs in the world. But we're not here to admire Michelangelo's statues. We are going to examine the bodies of the Medici buried in the crypt beneath them. This is a project no one ever thought would happen. We have been given permission to exhume the bodies of the first family of Italy, the Medici. It's as if in America we were excavating the tombs of George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and John F. Kennedy. And we've got 49 of them buried in this crypt. The only person in the world who could have pulled off this excavation is my friend, Professor Gino Fornaciari. I met Gino five years ago when he was examining the mummy of Beata Cristina of Spoleto, a holy woman who was embalmed by the sisters of her convent. Gino is Europe's leading paleopathologist, a master of diseases of the past. Is this the incision where they remove the organs? The thorax. My specialty is mummies, so Gino invited me to work with him. The, this individual was uh, very fat, very large. Right, yeah. very large. I mean, now, his dream of examining the Medici is about to come true, skin here. and I will be assisting him. Isn't it surprising for a saint? Working in the crypt is strange. It's kind of like working in the Lincoln Memorial. It's hallowed ground. Tourists buy tickets and wander around, and we carry on our work right next to them. But I've got a bigger problem than dodging tourists. My job will be to open the tombs and determine if the bodies are in good enough condition to be studied. You know, we see this in, in, in embalming all the time in the ancient bodies. But I just thought, when I saw the, when I saw the um, plaster cast, yes. They have already been studying the... Donatella Lippi is the mighty mouse of the team, a professor of medical history at the University of Florence and authority on the Medici. It's been so long since anyone has seen the bodies of the Medici that we don't know what we will find. No one's still alive who opened the crypt last time, and there are no detailed records of what they found. What worries me most is water. Normally, the Arno flows peacefully through Florence, but every few hundred years, it becomes a terror. And that's what happened in 1966. Florence was ravaged by a flood, and for 24 hours, the crypt was under five feet of water. This brown line isn't age. It's the high water mark in the crypt, and water isn't good for mummies. It can destroy soft tissue, and given enough time, it can even dissolve bones. And we don't know how much water seeped into the burials, or how long it stayed. We don't even know if there'll be anything left to work with. At the very okay, least, we'll need bones. The only way to find out is to open the first tomb. We're starting with the big ones, four bodies that could solve a 400-year-old murder mystery. A husband, wife, and two of their teenage sons. The father, Cosimo de' Medici, through a series of shrewd moves in 1540, had made himself absolute ruler of Florence, and he was looking for a wife. He married the 16-year-old daughter of the Viceroy of Naples. Eleonora was young, charming, and very rich. It was a politically smart marriage, like uniting the Kennedys and the Rockefellers. And like the Kennedys, a brief period in Camelot would end in tragedy. The tragedy that concerns us involves two of their sons. Supposedly, they quarreled on a hunting trip, and Garcia, the younger brother, stabbed and killed Giovanni. When Cosimo learned his favorite son had been killed, he flew into a rage, took his sword, and killed Garcia. But is it true? Our first tomb will be one of the sons, Giovanni. First, we have to remove the marble plaque on the floor that shows the burial spot. Then remove the body. But I'm not sure exactly how it's going to work. The thing is, you can't bring in heavy equipment because you can't have vibrations, you can't have anything that's sort of doing it all by hand. But uh, it looks in pretty good shape. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that the, the water won't have gotten in. That's the big thing. 
The easiest part is removing the plaque. But there's bad news. This is unfortunately mud from the Arno River. This is when it overflowed in 1966. It's still a little bit moist, so water may be a problem, but we'll see. We're going to try to clear it all out. Underneath, it sounds like there's metal or something else. I'm not sure why. The grave seems to be filled with rubble. But then we hit another surprise, a large stone slab covering the burial chamber. No end, huh? You didn't find the end yet. The immediate problem is that it's longer than the space we've opened in the crypt floor. I don't see the end on either side. Yeah? No, he doesn't see the end. He doesn't see the end. It's not in. See here, maybe. We're going to have to remove some of the marble floor slabs. This will be tricky. I'm used to working in Egypt, where there's plenty of room and sand beneath you. Here, even the floor is an archaeological treasure. We decide to cut through the cement along the edge of the marble floor tile, and then lift the tile so we can see just how big the stone slab is. After much discussion, we agree that our workmen, Franco and Paolo, need to build a superstructure to raise the slab with pulleys. They have the equipment, pulleys, pipes, chains, and they quickly assemble the rig. In a second, we'll know if we're in business or not. We're about to open the first tomb in the crypt of the famous Medici family, the tomb of young Giovanni de' Medici. As we lift the slab covering Giovanni's tomb, there's bad news. Mud. Will there be anything left for the team to examine? That's not the only question. Where's the coffin? There's only a small box. Not what we expected. Well, in the 1940s, some of the tombs were opened, but the excavators left no records. We have no idea what they did with the bodies. The small box must be how they reburied the bones. It looks like an ossuary, a container for bones. You can see a line on the bottom of the box where it was sitting in the water. Maybe the box protected the bones. Well, now's the time to find out. The old label is still legible. The bones of Cardinal Giovanni, son of Cosimo I. Our first Medici, Giovanni, was a favorite son. The Pope made him cardinal at the age of 17. You don't find any teenage cardinals today. But he died at 19, and for 400 years, there were rumors that he was murdered by his brother. Will his bones tell us anything? Hopefully our research Good. will be able to settle the murder theory once and for all. It's wet on the bottom. As I lift the, the box with Antonio, our yeah. archaeologist, yeah. I can feel water on the bottom. But the box isn't rusted. Okay. We have okay. a chance. A vitamin just fell out of my pocket. I don't want to confuse anybody here. It's a vitamin. Yeah. Yeah. Down. Antonio, it's wet, huh? Yeah. There's a lot of water. Yeah, very wet. Um, but we'll see. The whole project depends on what's in this box, but we can't open it here. The team has set up a field laboratory in a side room of the crypt beside the chapel. The chapel is a major tourist destination, and our lab is just a few yards from where visitors stare at the treasures of the Medici. When the Medici tombs are opened, we bring the remains here to be examined. We determine their condition and what conservation they will need and see what we can learn from the bodies. If the bones have dissolved, the whole project could end here. There's bones. There's bones. Yeah, no. Some mud. Some mud, but it's okay. There are also soft Yeah? Yeah, I can't see. All right, we'll open. Okay. Okay.
We'll open, we're gonna take the whole thing off. This is the first time anyone has been face to face with a Medici in a long time. The bones have a strange coating on them. Is it mud? Textile. Se dice textile? 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 Stoffa. Yeah. No, we're okay. It's disintegrated linen that once covered the bones. Gina will have something to work with okay, right? and is very relieved. It's good. It's a good skeleton. Yes, it's one they can work with, right? Okay. Finally, we may be able to determine if Giovanni was murdered. Bravo. <laughs> Crucial to solving the mystery is Gino's team of physical anthropologists, bone experts from the University of Pisa. They are the Charlie's Angels of Skeletons and are used to such missions. They can articulate skeletons very quickly. Okay, not that quickly. It took them 15 minutes. The label on the box says it's Giovanni. But are they really his bones? The good news is we have a nearly complete skeleton and it's in good condition. The next step is to see if it's really our man, the 19-year-old cardinal. Look at the teeth. They're a good indicator of age. Now, this is a molar. They come in around 21 years old or so. This one's in, but the other one isn't in. If you look closely here, you can see it's coming in at an angle. That means he's probably not 21. He's younger, just about 19, which is the right age for our cardinal. But let me show you something else. If you can come over here, Julio, you can see this is the pelvis. And this is the top called the iliac crest. That usually fuses around the age of 21 or so. It's cartilage in the beginning and then it becomes bone. But you can see, it's not fused. So he's again, younger than 21, probably around 19. There's another indication we've got the right body. Look over here, this bone. Now we know that the cardinal was a sportsman. He liked hunting, so he's an athlete. This is a robust bone. It's a sign that he had muscle. As your muscles grow, the bone thickens. So I'm pretty sure we've got the right man. Now, it's a really good condition skeleton, but he wasn't in perfect condition. Let me show you one other thing about the teeth. Now, if you can come over here, come around, and I want to show you this tooth over here. You can see the roots of the tooth are exposed. That's a massive infection. Now, in Renaissance times, an infection like that could kill you. There were no antibiotics but I don't really think that's what killed him. Remember, some people think he was stabbed to death. The first place to look for evidence is the chest, but something's missing. This is the sternum, but one bone that's missing is the manubrium, which is right on top of it. And it's just the place where if someone going to stab you, you were vulnerable. But don't jump to conclusions. We have a lot of research to do, and it may not be the way he was killed. Once Gino's angels have cleaned the bones and articulated the skeleton, their work has just begun. Every bone must be measured, described, and photographed. Soon the Medici must be reburied, and the angels are responsible for assembling the most complete physical record ever made of a single family. Their records may contain the clues that will tell us if murder was involved. From their measurements of the long bones, they will calculate the height of the Medici. They will determine dental health and bone density. From their records, the Medici will live again. But that's not all. Marcello, Gino's assistant, takes bone samples for Gino's lab in Pisa. DNA will be extracted, providing a genetic record of the most important family in history. Working in the Medici Chapel has all kinds of perks. You get to see neat things off limits to tourists. Let me show you the most valuable graffiti in the world. Of all the artists supported by the Medici, perhaps the greatest was Michelangelo.